this webinar, we're going to take a look at what reporting you can do from, from Inventor Nasdaq. So in this over here, I've got a line diagram, and what I've put is just a couple of forces on in a different, different in a couple of different sub cases. So I think 500 newtons, 1,000, two and a half thousand, and 3,000 newtons, and then I've just got the same support sitting at the bottom over here. Now, as you know, with sub cases, uh, you know, if I've got four different sub cases over here. When I do run it, it'll actually solve for all four sub cases, so it'll give me the results um, of all four of those. Now, with the reporting, we can run a report. Um, if you've ever worked in inventor, um, in, in inventor analysis, the in inventor simulation, uh, you'll know that you can get, uh, you know, run reports from here, and it comes in a nice sort of tabulated form. Um, and Nastran kind of does the same as well, although it will go and put in the results for all four of these different subcases. So to do that, what we can do is we can right click on the analysis and we can run a generator report. This only works for your um, linear analysis. So generate report, and it will go and um, bring up this report wizard cover over here. So then you can put your title in, you know, obviously something specific to the client or the, the analysis that you're doing. Tells you the date, the author, um, you know, subjects prepared for software used. Uh, once that's done, then you've got a little bit of a summary. Okay, so the report documents design and analysis using Autodesk Nastran engineering simulation software. Linear static analysis was performed using the finite element model shown in the figure below. The model is divided into 23 property groups. The unit system is millimeters, newtons, centiseconds. The model consists of a total of 108 nodes and 117 elements. Okay, displacements are small and follower forces are ignored. So once that's done, you know, you can go and change that. You've got your group definitions any contact definitions you've got, and then just your mesh. So it tells you, you know, how big the mesh is, how many there are, uh, you know, you can just generally see then um, how, how, how that was created and performs. It tells you a little bit about the uh, structural loading as well, um, and where the moments are summed about, um, and then just also your reaction load vector resultants as well. And then just your solution over here, uh, it tells you the larger solution errors plus plus the loads that you've got over there. And then just a conclusion. Conclusion will tell you um, for each subcase what the loads were and what the, the maximum deflection was as well. Okay, a bit of a, a report wizard. Okay, so it just puts that in over there and then click on finish. And it'll ask you where you would like to go and save this. And uh, let's just go put it in this folder here. And then it goes and runs the simulation. So it puts in, nice thing about it, it, you know, it puts these pictures in so you can actually see uh, a much better, you know, you can see it visually as well as get all the, the numbers out of it as well. So while that is running over there, there is also another place to go take a look for this. So if I go to my trailer frame B, okay, in CAD, FEA, you'll see over here, I've got a .out file. And I can go and open this up with my notepad or note plus plus if you use that, okay. Okay, so that's just still running over there. Okay, so the report was successfully generated. We're going to go and view this report now. And it tells me what the report is over here. Okay. So summary assumptions, model definitions, group definitions. And as we go down, you'll see it will start now giving, you know, pictures of the initial conditions, assumptions, your model, your model definition. So it tells you each line element, what the material was, your bounding box, your mass, your volume how many nodes in it and how many elements it was in there as well. And then your part mass properties, okay, moments of inertia, center of mass, your mass and your material, material properties, and then your meshing. You got your structural loading, so applied load vector resultants, and then your structural support as well. So you got your resultant forces, in uh, your x, y, and z direction, and your resultant moments around the x, y, and z. Okay, applied load. And then you've got your solution over here. So it'll go through um, all your different subcases, 
your minimum displacement, your maximum displacement. Um, as you can see there, there's only displacement in. If I look down over here, right at the top, in my subcase one over here, my reference model. Okay, so that's the um, where you're having the displacement. Okay, so you can see over here, you know, you can just go through it and and take a look at your stress results summary. Okay, for each different part. So a lot of these parts aren't actually affected because I only put a force right at the end um, of the of the components over there. And then it goes through the different subcases and what the maximum displacement is, as well as your um, or the, or the displacement of each of your different subcases. Okay. So the displacement 1.7, that's for subcase 2, 3 mil for subcase 3, and then 4 mil for subcase 4. And then here are the stresses over here. So maximum 1.2. Uh, 1.24 for the first subcase, I think it was the 500 newtons. Um, 1.7 for the second case, 1,000 newtons. And we went up to 2,500 newtons. Okay, so the stress over there, sorry, stress is 22. I'm looking at the the deformities. Okay, over here, stress is 12.99 megapascals, and stress is 9.685 megapascals. Um, and then when I go right to the bottom there for the, for the main one, it's 29.448. Uh, megapascals. Okay, and then just in the conclusion over here, a linear st static analysis was performed using Autodesk NAS Transolver, and then you know it tells you the model, the elements, um, and there were four learning conditions were analyzed. Okay, so it tells you it's just the, uh, the conclusion. The maximum displacement was 1.243 millimeters for load subcase one. The maximum displacement was 1.7 millimeters for load subcase two. Uh, three millimeters for load subcase three and four millimeters for load subcase um, four. Okay, and then just the glossary. As we said, you know, when we were running it in the beginning, um, that's kind of what we saw. And then just going back to the, um, you know, the uh, the notes, the OUT file. So it's kind of got the same thing here. It's also got all the information in here as well. And it will tell you information about every single element and node you have over here and the placement as well. So this is also, you know, is a nice way if you want to really take a look and analyze exactly what's going on in this model. You'll see it's actually quite a long, long page. Um, you know, there we go. You can see there, subcase one, two, three, four. Obviously, I would have named this a little bit better, um, you know, so that you can actually identify it. And then you've got all your coordinates for your, um, you know, for all your, your bars. So you can see there, ID 1 to 23. So you'll see exactly what elements your moments of inertia, isotropic material definition, okay, subcase vector output set definitions, okay, for subcase ID 1, 2, 3, and 4. And as I'm going down, you now see all the bar element stress recovery property definitions. So you'll run through all of that 1 to 23. Okay, your stiffness matrices. Okay. And then right at the bottom, I just want to check this so reference points. Right at the bottom, um, you will find all your um, your subcases. So here we go. And the maximum stresses. Okay. So, so yes, there we go. So those are, are two of the different reports that you can generate, um, you know, within um, you know, within Nastran NCAD or Inventor Nastran. So, as I said, the, the first one was just by right-clicking on the, um, the component and then just saying, you know, um, generate report. The other one is going into the folder where your, your model is saved. There'll be a, a FEA folder in there, and then in that FEA folder, an NCAD folder. In that NCAD folder, you'll have a .out. Um, and, and that's where uh, you will find this .out file. You can open up, I've just done it in Notepad, or you can open it up in uh, Notepad++. You'll see over here maximum displacements and maximum forces of single point constraint, internal load vector resultants. Okay, so it's all zero, but every subcase one, two, three, and four. So you'll find that over there. Okay. And there's this kind of a glossary. Oh, sorry, this is just the parameters that you've got. So you're telling you what your parameters are in Nastran, uh, what's on and off, what values you've got for all of those. Okay. So besides in Nastran, or in West Nastran, where you can take a look at your, your plots, okay, so my contours, um, you can, as I said, go generate a report and see what values you've got coming out uh, for any forces or displacements that you've got um, in your design. Great, thank you very much for watching.